Hello and thank you for joining us today here at the Bramble Patch. My name is Wendy and on technicals we have Alicia. Uh, thank you once again for watching and keep sending in your comments. We very much appreciate it. Everybody here at the Bramble Patch is safe and well and we hope you're all well as well. So today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. Today I'm going to show you how to do these wavy lines just freehand and it's actually really simple there's no special rulers uh, all you need is a rotary cutter with a reasonably sharp blade you're not using freezer paper or bonder web or anything like that so i've done this little cushion uh, just to hopefully show you um the contrast of colors as you go through and if i try and pop this down here you can see how effective it can be uh, so I've done this little cushion cover. Obviously, at the moment, we're still in the pandemic, so I've done it with the rainbow colours. They're just scraps of fatigue. Uh, it's something I really actually enjoyed doing. And what led me to do this tutorial was um, in the area, in one of the areas where I sew at home, um, I made this uh, little wall hanging a long, long time ago. Um, so this is just... Uh, it wasn't a charm pack, they were, uh, it was fabric left over from a quilt that I made. And I decided to do an insertion uh, just with uh, little bits and bobs on there of a sewing machine, um, threads, scissors, pin cushion, and a little rotary cutter. Uh, and it's actually really quite nice. So uh, the other uh, thing that you can do with this is you can then start to do landscapes or seascapes which is something I actually really enjoy doing. So I've put this one uh, little piece together. Um, and as you can see, uh, you've got the sand, with a couple of rocks here, and you're going through the sea and we hit the sky. I will show you something towards the end with this. So if you're ever thinking of doing a landscape, a seascape, anything like that, uh, you generally work with uh, thirds. So you can have a third at the top, or at the bottom, depending which way you go. Generally, if you're using doing the C, you generally start off with the lighter fabrics fading back into the darker shades. And remember where the sea uh, meets the sky, you tend not to have waves, it tends to be a flatter line. So I've also got a few things uh, cut out that I can just show you hopefully uh, at the end of the tutorial, how you can place sticks on and have fun. Uh, and if you ever have got children, uh, grandchildren or children visiting, you can play and hopefully uh, I might be able to show you how you can have a little bit of fun with that. So first of all, um, how do we approach this? So um, I always make sure that, say, if I wanted my piece of work to finish up 15 inches in width, I always cut the strips uh, longer because what I want is I want to be able to tidy the edges up at the end. Uh, I much personally prefer to do it that way, but this is your choice. Um, once you've had a go with it, uh, you can go with whatever works for you. So um, I'm going to be working with, these are just strips. Um, they are cut between three and a half and four and a half inches in width this way. Uh, they're not all exactly the same length, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you actually how to layer this up and cut it. So I've got a couple of pieces here, and I just need to make sure that I'm working with the part that you can see. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you, you have the bottom one over the top or the other way around, as long as you have an overlap. So I've purposely cut this uh, mustard colour actually narrower than this so that you can see the overlay that I have. So if you can see here, uh, if I lay this, I'm going to bring this hopefully closer to the camera, and you can see here, this is the depth of overlay that I have. So this is the depth of the wave that can be cut. All right, so I'm going to place that down. So I've got the mustard overlaying, um, we'll call it the blue fabric. So take your rotary cutter. Now it doesn't matter which angle you start at. Don't try and cut the waves too deep because 
with the way I do it, um, I don't want to be starting to have to clip corners and everything. This is a really simple, easy, effective way to do a curve. Okay. So first of all, I'm just going to place my rotary cutter. Now I can see the overlay I have. So I'm going to place my rotor cutter and I'm just going to cut randomly a nice little gentle wave up and down like so. So now we have a cut. So I'm going to remove the piece here of the mustard. And what I tend to do is I put my finger if I can do it so that you can see my finger. My finger on the mustard and the blue that is going to stay. And then I just pull away the blue piece from underneath. So now you can see that these fit perfectly together. They have to because you cut them together. I'm just going to try and hold that up so you can see it. There, we've got a lovely wave just going through here. Now, once again, there are different ways of actually doing this. I'll show you the way that most people use, but it's not the way that I do. But I'm going to show you both ways because if you're a pinning person, you will probably much prefer this technique. So first of all, all I'm going to do, they, the two fabrics are sitting and they're butted up completely together. So I'm going to take the top fabric and I'm just going to roll that over on top of the mustard fabric, like so. And making sure that these two pieces meet here. So the, the prominent points where they've come down, I'm going to actually put pins in these two areas, like so. So I've pinned those. So now what we need to do, we need to now carry on and pin this section to this section. And the way that we do that is take the center, so the, the most prominent part of the curve that drops down, I'm going to take that and pull that up to the top of the other one and put a pin in it. And then what you've got to do is just pin the in-between section. So if I hold it, and you can just literally manipulate it. Because now this is cut on a bias, it's stretchy. So it easily nestles into itself. Anybody that's a dressmaker or has done that sort of thing will know that actually they just literally nestle into each other. And you can just pop pins. You can put as many pins as you want to. Not with that one, because it's a bent one. Um, and just literally it, it all fits in. So I'm just going to very, very quickly pin this because this is the pinning way that you do it. And this is why I always say cut it wider than you want to because if you are a, a small amount out at the end, a quarter of an inch or whatever, it's not the end of the world. It's not then eaten into uh, the size that you want it to be and you're going to finish up with a smaller um, block or whatever it is you're actually making. Okay, so I'm just going to pin these and then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. Now when you start sewing this, I generally say don't sew more than an inch and a half at any one time without stopping, repositioning and manipulating your fabric. Because that way, you'll get a much more pleasing curve on it. Quite often, I will only do three quarters of an inch. Um, I have used this technique on a quilt borders that measured 90 inches on every side. But considering the short length of time it took me and how pleased I was at the end of it, it was worth it every second I spend on it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And as you can see now, 
these two edges are together. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, pop it underneath the foot of the sewing machine, just make sure they're together, like so. And if you have a speed control on your machine, you may choose to slow your machine down a little bit. If it makes it more comfortable for you, then do that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the first pin out and I'm going to just sew. Oops. About an inch. Remove that and just take my pin cushion around here. I've got a, a, a magnetic pin cushion here. Um, I'm quite happy to use the magnetic pin cushion on the table, but I would advise you not to place your magnetic pin cushion on the computerized sewing machines. Because of the magnets, sometimes over a long period of time, if you left your magnetic pin cushion on there, um, you could do damage to um, the boards in there. So to have it on the table by the side is absolutely fine, but I do not put it on my um, computerized sewing machine. Um, it will help lengthen the life of everything and make sure everything's safe. And generally there's space at the side of the machine anyway. So I'm just very gently, just easing this round as I go, just taking the pins out as I go along. And I'm over halfway round doing this little curve now. And the reason I chose these fabrics was hopefully to um, highlight, because once again, I've got such a, quite a contrasting colour. I didn't want to use, um, you know, a blue against a blue, because you possibly wouldn't be able to see terribly well what I'm doing. Um, with the landscape that, the seascape that I've done, I did start from the bottom and work up. Once again, that is personal choice. And then at the end, I actually took the corners off and did the rocks across it. So you can change things as you go along. There we go. We're very, very near the end now. And what I'm going to do now, I'm on one of the deeper curves now, I'm just going to manipulate that round and swing that round a bit more. And I'm just gonna, I'm hoping you can see that I'm pulling this piece out of the way so that it's nice and flat. There we go. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip that thread off there. And take this across. Okay, so you've got something now that looks a little bit unruly, but it's not a problem. Again, this is something that you can press from the back first or the front first, it makes no difference. I generally press from the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the blue one over the mustard one because it might highlight so that you can see it a bit better. If I do it the other way around, it might not be quite so obvious. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to literally press it down. It's not even difficult. If you, I haven't got uh, water in this um, iron at the moment, it's just a dry iron. Um, when I was making the little seas seascape one at home, um, I actually had um, water in my iron. Uh, sometimes I'll have a spray by my side as well. So, to start off with, there we go. I'm hoping that you can see how smooth that is. There's no puckers no pleats and if I turn it over you will see exactly the same it just sits really nicely so that's the first way that you can do it by using pins and as you can see it's effortless so now I'm going to show you another way to cut it exactly the same but we are going to um, use one pin so this time, what I'll do is, um, how shall I do this one? We'll put, I think I'll cut the piece off of this one. I'm trying to highlight it so you can see the overlay. This is only a little sample. 
Right. So I have the blue one here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to overlay the mustard. Okay. And once again, I'm hoping you can see here, this is the amount of the depth of the sweep I can go up and down. Okay. If you want to, you can carry on just wiggling it and keep it all in the same row. I tend to be um, uh, a little bit different and go in opposite directions and do all sorts of things. Okay. So we've got an overlay here of about an inch and a quarter. Uh, and for the purposes that I want today to demonstrate, that is more than adequate. So once again, I'm locking my uh, rotary cutter. I've got a swap rotary cutter, let me get this one. Okay, I've got the rotary cutter and I'm going to start at this angle and I'm going to go down, cross, Right, so I'll remove the top one to start with. Now I can see the shape of the wave that I'm going to be getting. Remember when you cut this wave, you're going to lose a quarter of an inch of it. So don't cut it the depth you want it to be. Uh, and you can crisscross and go over the previous lines if you want to. And that's what I did in the seascape. So I've removed the excess fabric from this one. What I now want to do is remove the excess fabric of the blue. So I'm going to put my finger, you can't see me. I'm going to put my finger on the blue at the bottom and the mustard here. And I'm just going to pull away the excess fabric here. And then I can nestle those back into each other. So this is what it currently looks like. So what I'm going to do now, I'm now going to stitch this by using one pin, okay? And this is the way that I do, do this, and this is the way I do all my curved piecing. I don't pin, I only ever use one pin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pin, I can find what I've done with them. There we go. I'm gonna take one pin, I'm gonna take the corner here, and I'm going to just flip that over and pin it right to the blue fabric. Like so, All right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna to try to show you here before I take it to, to the sewing machine. I'm going to make sure that these two <coughs> edges here are level. And then I'm going to feed this around as I sew. And you'll see how this comes out. So let me take this to the sewing machine. I'm hoping that the camera we have on the sewing machine will pick it up, which is why um, Alyssa and I decided to go with the three angles today. I'm hoping that you may be able to see uh, the way that I'm actually manipulating it as I go around. Right, so first of all, I've put my foot down and I'm just going to take a few stitches just to anchor that first piece. I've now removed my one pin because the two pieces of fabric are anchored together. Okay, right, I'm now going to take my top piece of fabric and I'm going to lay it so that both the blue and the mustard are edge to edge. And I'm going to stitch. And as I'm stitching, the feed dogs from the sewing machine that feeds the fabric through is feeding the blue fabric around. And all I'm doing is just manipulating the top fabric to keep it in line as I go around. So, I'm, I've got no pins, I'm just letting it feed round as you, as you go. And I'm coming to a curve now where I'm going to come back down. So now I'm going to pull this down. And if you've got surplus fabric here, you can actually just pull this backwards out of the way if you need to. To be honest, you don't generally have to, but I'm just showing you, talking, trying to talk you through all scenarios. Here we go. I'm on a downward bed curve now. I'm coming in the valley 
and I'm coming back up the mountain. If that's the right terminology, I'm making this up as I go along. Uh, but it's just feeding through beautifully. It's effortless, it really is. Um, but you do whatever works for you. Uh, there's lots of different ways to get curves. You can buy the curve rulers to draw along. You can do um, this sort of thing with freezer paper, which is something I would actually like to do with you all um, at a later date, um, if anybody was interested. Um, so that's be something that I could be working towards for a future tutorial. Um, and I think if I did do that, I would probably do um, rolling hills, fields and flowers and that sort of thing, which could be rather nice. So I've just edged towards the end there, and I've sewn all the way along there, only anchoring it with the first pin. So once again, you can see there, all I'm going to do is exactly the same, because it's exactly the same as the first one. All I'm going to do is now press. I'm pressing the wrong side, that is just my choice, it doesn't matter. Press that first one down, turn it over, and now press the top. There we go. Just turn that off. And there we go. Hopefully, you can see the waves that we've created. One, using the pinning method and one doing it without so those that's the technique that you use to make this and i've just got one other little thing that i will show you and this is the seascape that i've done so i'm hoping if i can turn this around and give you those bits and bobs that we'll be able to see that you'll be able to see what I've got here. Okay, so what I've done, I've cut a few bits and bobs out here, and this is what I mean when you can have fun. So all I've done, uh, using the um, uh, Teflon sheet, which I did a previous tutorial in, uh, so uh, if you want to build up uh, different things, uh, remember if you're ever doing something pictorial, uh, you generally don't want to cut it across the middle. Uh, things are not always cut in half. You tend to have perspective to work towards. So you generally work with a third. Uh, I've got the sky at the top with the two thirds being um, the sea and then the sand at the bottom. So remember, if you're looking at something, for instance, um, I had great fun yesterday. I was making yachts. So if I've got a yacht, the further away it is, the smaller it's going to look. The closer to you, the larger it would be. Okay, uh, you can play, you could have a ball. I've, done a, I've got an aeroplane here that I could have in the sky if I wanted to. Um, I've got buckets and spades. I'm hoping you can see these. Buckets, no, I can't see that. I'm trying to position this so that you can see things. Buckets and spades, you've got kites. Um, if you have fabric, uh, pictorial fabric, you can put your bonder web on the back and fussy cut um, that sort of thing. I've used the feather stitch on the sand so it looks as though um, birds and that have been walking along the sand. And I've, got, I've even got a whale's tail here to remind me of um, my quilting cruise around Alaska. Oh, I've even got a cruise ship, look at that. So do remember, if you want to do anything like that, you will need to remember a cruise ship, because it's a far away, although they're a very large um, liner, is going to look quite small because it's in the distance. So that just gives you a few little ideas. So if you prepare something like this, or even if you use an ombre fabric, you can just have fun and create something of a memory that you may have had together, um, either just yourself or with a friend or with a family member. 
And these also do make lovely, lovely gifts as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial on the freestyle wave cutting um, for the uh, cushion that I've showed you, which is here. And again, all of the things, anything like this, you can actually use bits and pieces that you already have. You can even use parts of jelly rolls as well. Uh, that's what uh, a lot of this um, in the seascape has done. So thank you once again. I hope this hopefully may inspire you and give you something to think about and fill a couple of hours in of your trial in it. Thank you for joining us now. Bye-bye for now.